Hi, this is Robert with Better Geiger, and today I'm making a video to try to explain the new S2L variation of the Better Geiger S2 radiation detector. So what I have here is the S2, which is basically the flagship product, so to speak, for the last little while. And what I'm releasing now is the S2L. And so this video will try to explain what the differences are, what the advantages and limitations of the two are and help you understand that and perhaps decide which one, uh, one or either or both or neither is suitable for, for your needs if you're looking for a radiation detector. So I labeled them just to make it clear, S2, S2L for these, for these demonstrations. But um, as you can see, they look pretty similar. When the S2L ships in a few weeks, it's going to have a different printed material here. Um, that's why I put this label to make it more clear, but uh, otherwise it'll be the same general size and kind of feeling and the same button layout and most of the same features. It's going to still, both are powered by two AA batteries and the only major difference is going to be inside the sensor is different and uh, I'll explain that detail and, and show some demonstrations here in a minute. But to start with, I'll explain the S2, why it, what it was, uh, what was in mind when it was designed. So basically it was meant to be a very low cost detector that is very effective at measuring dose rate and is very easy to use, simple to use, rugged, reliable, easy for a beginner. And like I said, to be as capable as possible for measure, measuring radiation levels and being somewhat sensitive um, while still being very affordable. So the key features of this, which distinguishes it from sort of comparable products that are roughly in the same price range, is the high maximum range. So this measures up to 100 millisieverts per hour, which is about 10 rem per hour or rad per hour, sort of similar. Um, and that's a quite high range. So people who are interested in having something available that can measure a very high range in case there was some really extreme emergency situation, that is one of the key features of this device. So it has a pretty small scintillator crystal inside. The sensor is a scintillator, but it's a quite small crystal, which keeps the cost down. And for most people, that's very adequate if they're not uh, needing a large sensitive crystal, which I'll get into in a minute with the S2L. But basically, yeah, it's meant to be very simple, AA batteries, simple buttons, straightforward, easy to use. And that's the S2 in a nutshell. So enter the S2L. Um, the S2 retails for about $150, and the S2L is going to retail for $200. So it's a little bit more expensive due to the larger crystal inside which so it's a more expensive sensor basically so that's why it's more expensive but it's a much much larger crystal inside the s2l is a three cubic centimeter cesium iodide simulator crystal so that's fairly large it's by far the cheapest device that you can get with a with a crystal of that size um, off the shelf so it's still pretty affordable i think and the basic trade-offs between the two is that the S2 has the small crystal, the L has the large crystal. So the large crystal means it's very, very sensitive, and I'll, I'll do some demonstrations here in a minute with some sources. But the large crystal means it can react very quickly to small changes in radiation level because it, it's a large sensor. That means it picks up a lot more of what's flying around and catches more X-rays and gammas, so to speak. And that... Um, allows it to be more of a search tool uh, for finding things like finding antiques or radioactive minerals in nature and things like that. So that's really where this excels, but because it's more sensitive, um, the same amount of radiation flying around, it catches more of them, which means the sensor saturates more easily. So while the S2 can handle up to about 100 millisieverts per hour with a cesium source, the S2L will go to about five or maybe a little more. Um, millisieverts per hour. So it's still a substantial range, but if your sole purpose is sort of emergency preparedness or something like that, the S2 is the better choice. 
if you're more into hobby type things, searching for antiques or radioactive rocks or, or sort of look, you know, trying to identify very slightly radioactive things that might you might find here and there, like maybe um, some items, you know, in the hardware store or certain potassium containing items and things like that. So with the S2L, you, you will really be able to catch that much more quickly and easily with the larger sensor. And so that's, that's in a nutshell, the differences. And to give more of a feeling for that, I'll try to do some quick demonstra demonstrations here. Both are still energy compensated devices, meaning they will automatically account for any variation in, in gamma energy coming in and give the correct dose. Um, the S2, I'll start with a quick demonstration here to show that it's, it's fairly sensitive, but so this is a much, much, um, much more commonly bought low cost device. It saturates at about one millisievert per hour. So that's an important difference and it's less sensitive. So to do a, to quickly demonstrate that, I'll just show this is the optional test source that you can buy with a better Geiger. And if I put it here, you can hear it starts to react. Um, it does, it does react to that. This tube, like I said, it will saturate more easily, but it will also be more sensitive to beta than gamma. And so that's useful sometimes, but it's also a problem because if you're picking up beta, it will give you a falsely overestimated dose reading. And it's also not energy compensated, meaning if there's a low energy gamma source, which is quite common, it will quite overestimate. And if there was a there's a beta source, it will extremely overestimate. So that's uh, part of the selling point of the S2 is that the user uh, will generally can trust this number even if they don't know what's going into it. Whereas with this one, you should know, you know what the environment is, whether or not it's an accurate dose reading or not. And usually it's going to be not very accurate, whereas the S2 is pretty plug and play, turn it on and go. So you see it's reacting here. Turn that off. And just to give a little comparison, you see it's a much higher count rate for the same source. So it's catching more of those X-ray and gamma. So it's still fairly sensitive and it has a very high range, so it's pretty versatile. But if this very small, very tiny amount of uranium ore is a little bit further away, it, it reacts a little bit, but not much. So that is just giving one example of this versus, let's say, uh, a more common, much lower cost Geiger tube, traditional Geiger tube device. So I'll set that aside for a second and enter the S2L. So just in the background, you have a much higher count rate because it's catching more of the natural background. And you'll see that when this little source gets close, it really starts to scream because it's catching so much radiation. So um, it's not as easy to demonstrate, but if this were further away, you would still see pretty quickly an elevation in the level. Um, you can see basically the, the number is already going up quite a lot at that distance, and it's still pretty noticeable, although it might not be so easy to uh, tell just by watching this video. But um, if, it, if it were to go close by for a short amount of time, you would really hear, hear it react. Whereas with the regular S2, it will react and it will tell you it's there, but it needs a little more time um, for the number to rise because it has to uh, measure for a longer period of time and kind of average those numbers out because of the smaller crystal inside. So um, putting that aside for a minute again, uh, I'll turn the clicker off just for a minute. So that's what a really small, um, weak source looks like. This is maybe a larger... This is a larger piece of uranium ore co collected here in Colorado. And you'll see basically, um, even at quite a distance, it really reacts strongly. So if you were walking around searching for something like this outside, it would tell you right away, you know, you could move this around and scan much more quickly and easily. And that's really what the large sensor is good for and what the S2L is intended for. Um, for sort of that search functionality and really optimize for that search functionality. So I'll do one more example here, an object a lot of people are interested in searching for and finding. This is a piece of Fiesta ware, 
which is basically uh, a uranium containing glaze on this old antique ceramic and it's a very distinct orange color and so if you some people collect these or want to recognize them or identify them or maybe they want to find them in their homes and then get rid of them or whatever but you'll see basically the S2L picks up a lot of those very small amount of gammas coming out and reacts very very quickly whereas the S2 turn them both off it will react you'll see the number slowly creep up to 300 340 370 but it's it's slower so that's really the trade-off is this is very fast to react lower maximum range this is a bit slower to react high maximum range i hope that explains the differences um like i said for the user there will be very little difference um the s2l will have a different um printed silk screen on the on the top but otherwise everything will pretty much look and feel the same the screen will be more responsive it will show um, it doesn't need as much time to change the number so it'll be much much more rapidly um, displaying a, a current number whereas this one will kind of drift up and down in a changing environment so i hope that's helpful i hope that clarifies the differences and why why this is offered alongside this and if you have any questions let me know um, at the time this video is being released the pre-orders are going to be available so yeah, if you want, go go to the website bettergeiger.com and order one if you want. Thanks for watching.